Hey homeschool friends. It's so it's been a little bit. I've actually taken a small little break on the channel for a variety of reasons. Things have been a bit hectic around here. So I thought it would be fun to kind of get back in the swing of things by doing a homeschool update video. And since you all helped me so much last month when I was talking about my son and reading, I wanted to kind of give you an update on where I landed, what I decided to do, so many good things. So stay tuned for the update. So hi, my name is Angie. Welcome to my channel if you are new here or welcome back if you have been coming for a while. Today's video is my October homeschool update. And before I get into kind of specifics about what's going on, I did want to mention that I have a goal this year for reading. And I haven't shared the goal. I actually do have a video coming up talking about how I set kind of intentions and goals for this specific year. And this year, my goal has been reading teaching my kids to read. They are both really focusing on those skills. And so for me to set my intention on reading, it helps me stay in that mind frame and not add too much extra when I know that this is kind of our focus. So I wanted to mention that on the front end because some of the changes I made were in response to that idea that I wanted to keep things focused on reading, if that makes sense. So I will jump in with our family subjects. Again, I am loving sunlight. And so we've recently jumped back into history and we've, and we've jumped in kind of pre-revolutionary war, George Washington, all that stuff. Actually, let me show you. So we've been reading books like this one. So this is George versus George. It's about George Washington versus King George III as they talk about kind of what set the stage for the Revolutionary War. This book is awesome. I've really enjoyed it. It's a great picture book. It has great information. They have been engaged with it, but I would say I'm not sure if a five-year-old would be engaged with this because my kids are almost eight and six and a half now, I guess, at this point. So they really love it, but I would say it's a little bit advanced. So that's been going really well. And what I've been liking is actually, let me just show you. So I've been liking these markable maps that Sunlight has. I wasn't using them. I didn't know how, but I figured out a way that really works. So what I do is I just give my kids kind of they each have their own color marker and as we we're talking about what happened like and for instance you can kind of see what my son was drawing here we were talking about the taxes of how the England was trying to tax the colonists and they were getting mad and he threw and then they threw the tea in the harbor which he drew a picture of the ship and what I had him do was basically narrate using his marker and the markable map after we kind of had gone through the lesson. And it was really cool because then I got to see what he understood and he really had fun because he got to play with the markers and show me all the stuff. So I loved that. It was kind of this like light bulb moment where I was like, oh, that really works. That's a great way to pull narration out of history. So we've been loving the history and the science. So we got to the part, let me find my book, where we were reading about Pasteur and the pastures fight against microbes is what this book is called. And as you know, if you've been on my channel for a while, I'm a microbiologist. I have my PhD in microbiology. I love microbiology. And this book was so much fun. My kids loved it. They were so engaged. They were just talking about how he acted like a scientist and how he observed different things and how he grew them. And I feel like they were just kind of engrossed in, in his process of how he figured some stuff out to the point where we got to the next day when we weren't reading this. And my son was like, wait, are we reading about Pasteur? And I was like, no, but I love the fact that you liked it. And this just really speaks to enthusiasm. I'm enthusiastic about it. Like I love it. And so they were just like all about it. And I'm just like, that's right. When I'm excited, they're excited. So it was a good reminder and it's just been really fun. We've been really enjoying the science. But one thing about science that I do want to mention. So we have temporarily at this moment stopped doing the experiments only because it's just a little too much in my week and it was causing me stress. But I have a plan. My plan actually, there's two different ideas. One idea is I was thinking of either making it Science Saturdays so we can pick up some experiments on Saturday or I could do Science Summers. So in other words, my thoughts are that I can go through all the material, all the reading, all the activity sheets, things like that during the school year because we can easily fit that in and then either do weekends or summertime to highlight some of the experiments, which just sounds fun to me. It gives us a little bit of a schedule in the summer potentially 
and it also helps reinforce learning. For instance, we learned about something like the five senses, and then there was an experiment on hearing. I can't remember exactly what it was, but we would be able to talk about that in the summer and then be like, what do you guys remember from our learning from this past year? So that's my plan. And again, this, this change comes back to the idea of my intention being set on reading. So that's kind of our family subjects. Those are the two main ones we're doing, except for, I forgot, read alouds. We finished Half Magic. So I was talking about this with you guys last time. We really enjoyed it. It's about just these kids, this family who find like this little token that is magical, but it only grants half of a wish and, and just kind of their adventures from there. So we finished that. We loved it. They want to get more of the other ones. And then we picked up Mrs. Piggle Wiggle as part of our school reading, not our nighttime reading, which is what the other book was. But this actually isn't part of the Sunlight K program. It is part of Sunlight A. And I picked it up because we had already read My Father's Dragon, which is what was scheduled on our schedule. And so I'm like, I'll just pick up something from A because I'm not gonna do Sunlight A with my big kids. They already did an Around the World program when we did Build Your Library, but I have picked up a used copy of Sunlight A for my twins when they get old enough. So I had a lot of these readers and they are loving this book. It's really funny. They're just always waiting to see what Mrs. Pickle Wiggle is going to do next. What cure is she going to have for the kids? I don't know if you have read this, but it's really funny. And then as for the nighttime book, I always give them a choice. And I had like a stack of five books and they both agreed that they wanted to read Pippi Longstocking, which was a surprise because I had some other books in there. So this is again, kind of a classic. It has some of that like older style writing. Actually, all three of these kind of are not super modern books but they've really enjoyed them. And Pippi has just been a kick. Like they just think she's really funny. It's also good as we can talk about how the character of Pippi tends to lie a bunch. And we're working through that. So it's good, it's good character development, but it's really laugh out loud. And, and whenever we sit down on the couch at night, they're like, I wonder what Pippi's gonna do today. And so it's just really, really cute. So we've been enjoying Pippi Longstocking. Okay, so next, my second grader, which he was kind of the topic of my last update, which you all helped me, gave me advice on brainstorming on kind of a new direction or kind of some ideas for how to supplement his reading, his phonics. And I will put a link up to that video, which was my September update video. In a nutshell, basically I was saying that the current program we were using, which was all about reading too, didn't quite have enough review. I was finding that he was stumbling over certain things we had learned in level one. And most notably, which I didn't mention in the last video, but most notably it was the blends. So like if they had two consonants at the beginning or the end or words who had blends at the beginning or the end, he just really struggled with. And once I kind of wrapped my head around that was kind of the big thing, we could either have gone back and redone a lot of level one. But when I mentioned that, he just looked devastated. Like he couldn't imagine going back. And I was like, that's not the plan then. That's not a good idea. So in order to review those concepts, what I decided to go with was a Becca. So their language arts program level one or grade one, whatever they call it. And a Becca is notoriously ahead. So using grade one for my second grader did not bug me. That seems very appropriate. And so what I did is I picked up a number of things. I picked up a lot of manipulative, so I'll show you that. So I picked up a lot of the just different charts because a lot of the charts are blends. And so that's really helpful for him to kind of really zero in on the blends. And then I picked up the workbooks because I think he just needs more practice on recognizing the blends and having it be a routine thing. And so I picked up some of the worksheets and you can see here they're working on full and flake and glue and glue. And so he can circle the special sound and mark the vowels. So Abeka kind of filled in some gaps and it also allowed me to kind of pitch it to him in the way of, I found something to supplement all about reading because we want to keep all about reading. We're going to continue with it. We're just going to supplement it with a lot of these Abeka principles. And I sold it to him by saying like, this will help you read faster. Not that I care if he reads faster, but he really wants to read right now. So he is super motivated by that idea that this will get him there quicker and it will because as I look through the program, there's lots of different rules, such as the one vowel rule or the two vowel rule, which is just such a simple rule that can be used on a lot of different 
combinations. If it's no matter if it's a silent E rule or if it's like an O, A, A, I, A, Y, all the things that they can say the long sound on the first vowel and cross out the second vowel. It's helped him so much. He has just jumped in his ability to read. And I love all about reading in the sense that they are more thorough where they'll spend some time on those phonograms all by themselves, like the OA phonogram. And actually I have no idea if Abeka will get to like the OA phonogram, but now he knows how to read words with the OA in the middle. So it just kind of gave him this just like boost of confidence, huge boost guys. We've been doing this for about two weeks and he has started flying through books and he has been so proud of himself just by like, the two vowel rule. It just really opened up a lot of reading for him and then also just giving him the practice on the daily. So this, these kinds of things are just constantly reviewed and reviewed and reviewed to the point that he is starting to see it quicker and faster and he's starting to roll through those words without having to sound them out quite as much as he was doing when he was just, just doing all about reading. So it's been really good. So like I said, we're going to keep all about reading and I'm just basically pulling Abeka in and I'm I did end up getting the teacher's guide but mostly just to kind of cherry pick and to follow their progression of lessons so I skip some that he knows all right I double up some or things like that so I'm able to utilize that curriculum to meet the needs of what I'm trying to teach him if that makes sense additionally I forgot to add that I added an extra reading time so a time that I sit with him and read aloud to after our quiet time and I just kind of attached it to that time so now we do it every day and that includes the weekends so on the weekends we only do it after quiet time and on the school days we do a reading in the morning with his phonics lesson and then we do our afternoon reading so he's reading with me twice a day and it's really helping I feel like just that's constant practice we I pick some books that he can definitely read I pick other books that are more of a challenge we kind of have a big stack of rolling books if you will so it's been a really good choice so far we're only two weeks in. I'm not going to make any like big bold statements or review videos or anything like that, but that's what we decided to do and it's been working really well. So that's been really good. As for the rest of language arts, spelling has been good. We're using all about spelling. We're on level one. He's doing really well. He is flying through it. I picked up level two because I know he's probably going to slow down, but I'm just kind of going at his pace. And then the last thing for language arts, we were using sunlight. Again, this comes to this idea of my intention and focus being on reading. And what I was using sunlight for was creative writing and grammar, kind of light grammar, light creative writing. It was very gentle and I liked it. I really did. But I just decided that as for right now, I need to focus on reading and kind of getting my feet under me for how I'm combining these two programs. So we shelved the sunlight program just for a little bit. Not sure when we'll bring it back out or what we'll do, but we're not doing that currently. So that is language arts for my son. Math, Saxon, it's going well. There's nothing more to say about that. He is actually learning his facts, his math facts, a lot better than we have in the past. And it just comes to the constant review. Like there's a fact sheet every day and it's really helping him. So I'm really glad we picked level two and that he's really solidifying them, some of those facts. All right, to move on. My daughter, she's in first grade. She's six, she, she has a June birthday, so she's not quite six and a half. So we'll start with language arts and the story of language arts with her. So we started with All About Reading with her as well. And I started last year with her, actually, like starting after Christmas. So when she was like five and a half and we got through kind of lesson one through I think 26, something about halfway. And then she was just struggling. So at the beginning of this year, we started over. She didn't love it, but we started over and it was going a little bit better, but she still struggles with how she sounds things out, that she's not able to do it quickly, which is fine. I mean, she's still a young six. I'm not, I'm not complaining about that. What I struggle with, with the All About Reading program is all of her word cards. In order to be mastered, she has to be able to kind of look at them and see the word cat and say cat, not cat, cat. Like she's capable of reading all of her word cards. That's not the problem. It's just the idea that those need to be in order for those to be mastered. She has to kind of look at them and see, dig, you know, that she's able to do it quicker and she, she isn't. She's still very much kind of reading each sound, which is fine. That's just where she's at. What I decided to do though, because we've kind of stalled again 
with All About Reading level two, level one is I just decided to, to roll in some of Becca. I know, it's kind of the same story, but I picked up the K5 level. Again, I feel like they're really advanced. And I was able to start her midway, pretty much after they taught all the letter sounds, because she knows her letter sounds. That's not a big deal. Why I picked a Becca for her, because I looked at other programs. I wasn't just like, well, her brother's doing it, so I'm gonna have her do it. But why specifically her is I want her to have help with those blends. And so in a Becca, they're really known for helping the kids blend, especially the first two sounds, kind of that consonant vowel. Say it's like a B and an A to say ba instead of ba a. They they learn to kind of run it, so it's like ba ga instead of ba a ga bag. You know if that makes sense. And I think that would really help her as she learns to blend a little bit better. So. I'm utilizing a Becca K5 pretty much for that. That is a very strong aspect of their program is all these blend ladders and different flashcards. And so we're doing that. And at this point, I'm not sure if I'm just gonna use a Becca for that to get her to a better spot and then go back to All About Reading or if I'm just gonna continue with a Becca. What I'm at right now is I'm just at the wait and see. I just wanna see how she does with the program. And I'm using it again in kind of a targeted manner to just blending those first two sounds together in a consistent way while she's reading. I think it'll just really help her out and it'll help her with her confidence. So that's what we're doing for phonics reading with my daughter. And we are also doing an additional reading in the afternoon. And so those I've just picked Bob books or some of the Good and the Beautiful books that I picked up. I have an unboxing of a bunch of books I have for that. I actually have a video on the readers that I use with All About Reading. So I'll link that as well if that's helpful for anybody because it can sometimes be hard to find extra things to use with your kids if you're using All About Reading. So yes, that's her language arts. We haven't picked up spelling yet. I might after Christmas, just because she does know all her phonograms from all the All About Reading we've been doing and I think she would be fine with All About Spelling level one. So I'm thinking about starting that, but not right now, again. It's a year of reading, that's my goal. So, that's her language arts. Oh, and that means that we did, I did also drop sunlight for her on the creative writing and the grammar. Just tabling it for now to really help us focus on the reading and phonics for right now. And like her brother, I picked up those worksheets from Rebecca just to give her more practice, more kind of spiral, review, all that stuff. Okay, what's up? Now math for her, Saxon, level one. She's doing great. She's probably going to finish level one before the end of the year, but I just take it at her pace. Like some days I just do one lesson, some days I do two. She's pretty good at math. It's, it hasn't been a struggle and she's just learning. So it's a good fit for right now. Okay, so as for my almost four-year-olds, guys, they turn four. My twins turn four around Thanksgiving and they're just really fun. It's a fun age. It's a challenging age, but it's a fun age. And so as for preschool for them, we really aren't doing anything at home. I read some of the sunlight books that I picked up for the preschool program, but that's it. And I'm fine with that. I think the reading is really what I wanted for them anyway. And I actually did just sign them up for one more day of preschool at the preschool that's just a couple blocks from my house. So they were doing two mornings, now they're doing three. And really what it came down to is just the fact that all my kids are so close together and it's just challenging to have two almost four-year-olds while you're trying to teach reading. It takes a lot of my attention to teach reading, and it should. And it takes a lot of my kids' focus, my, my big kids. They need to focus, and so sometimes the twins were just really disruptive, and so it was just challenging. And then I also know that they love preschool. They've been really enjoying the two days a week they have been going, and so I'm like, it's worth it. It's worth it for, for me to be able to have a little bit more time to focus on teaching my kids, my big kids, and it's good for them because they've just been loving it. And as for what we do next year, I'm not sure, but I just decided it was smart to add one more day to our week to just help me out. So that's what we decided to do, and it's just been great. So that is my October homeschool update. Sorry, I've been a little... MIA lately, but I'm back hopefully a little bit more consistently than I was before. 
And again, thank you all for commenting so much on my last update. It was so helpful. Just the general feel of what everybody was saying really helped me nail down like worksheets for review and more, more kind of manipulative and flashcard practice. So it was just really helpful. So thank you, thank you again. So anyway, that is what I have for this video. I hope you liked it. If you did, please hit the like button, subscribe, all those things. But otherwise, I will see you in the next homeschool video. All right, guys, take care.